Today I'd like to continue along with my rare pathologies group. Today I wanted to talk about the core tria triatum, which in essence is a three atrium appearance, a left ventricle. So the separation of the left or the right atrium into two compartments by a membrane that traverses across the actual atria. In terms of classification, there's a most commonly used system as one developed back in by Loeffler in 49. And it has three different types. With the type 1, there's actually no opening in the membrane. And with the type 2, there are um, one or more small restrictive openings or so termed fenestrations resulting in a significant left ventricular inflow obstruction. And then there's the type 3, which has a larger non-restrictive opening, more commonly and likely seen in adults that you know haven't been actually diagnosed to that point. We call the left side of the sinestrum type called triatriatum and the right side of the dextrum. In terms of, as I was saying before, the membrane may be complete or may contain one or more of these fenestrations of differing sizes. When we consider the right atrium, sometimes we'll see something such as a Chiari network, which in essence is a multiple fenestrated remnant that exists and similarly redundant eustachian tubes and trapezium valves can also sometimes be seen which are not in essence necessarily core triatum, but they may be within the spectrum of the abnormalities that have that relative appearance. The true pathophysiology is not necessarily completely understood. The malincorporation theory is the most widely accepted but all the theories do seem to have some faults. The malincorporation talks about a failure to incorporate the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. The patients often do present with other congenital abnormalities such as tetralogy of fallow or ASDs or VSDs or partial anomalous pulmonary venous connections or a persistent left SVC will sometimes be seen. When we look at them, the relationship of the membrane to the left atrial appendage does differentiate core atrium from a differential diagnosis of supravalvular mitral stenosis. In the image here, we can see the membrane arising below the level of left atrial appendage. Where here it's actually above proximal to the origin of the valves because most may have a similar membrane type appearance. When you actually consider the presentation, it's similar to that of mitral stenosis, sometimes considered called left ventricular inflow obstruction, and all the typical features associated with that, such as atrial fibrillation or right heart effects, including pulmonary hypertension. In some cases, symptoms can increase as patients age due to a degree of fibrosis and calcification of the orifice, but with larger ones, normally they'll get away with that fine. So when we're thinking about the echo, we sort of want to identify size and number of communications and relative gradient across the communication. We also consider the other types of congenital heart disease. Is there anything that can be seen? We do consider, of course, right heart size and pressures and function. Uh, we would also be looking to see if there is any obvious membrane calcification and we consider what overall left atrial size would be and we also consider the differential diagnosis as discussing before in terms of that membrane position. These are some of the references I was using just looking for this. And so now it's going to present a couple of cases of adults with minimally restrictive left-sided triatriatum. The first patient there's a man in his 50s who had some increasing shortness of breath and slight swelling of the ankles. He did know that he did actually have the cautery artery out on the Looking at the initial image, the function looks fine, left and right ventricular. When you do actually look across the middle of the left atrium, though, you do notice an apparent membrane that does seem to be there, although it's not that clear from that first view. Wall thicknesses, chamber sizes seem okay. And now when you look at the colour flow though, you do see a relatively abnormal appearance with this apparent dominant flow in here and some flow here, but this more dominant flow seen from this view. When you zoom up on it, there, the membrane does become more apparent. And similarly with that colour flow becomes more apparent. Looking in short axis, we do see now this coming across and being quite mobile and flexible there. The more telling view, of course, is the four-chamber view where we see a dilated left atrium, but we clearly see this membrane now across the left atrium. And on zooming, you can see that nice and clearly. It doesn't appear particularly calcified or overly thickened from these views. 
When we come around to the two chamber view now, though, we do have this apparent absence of membrane over on the inferior side there. And similarly with color flow, it does show flow going across there. There's no flow acceleration with the color flow. It doesn't look like this particularly elevated gradient across there. And zooming on there, you can see that quite clearly. And when we look here again, we can see that it appears to go right across in that view. And the size of the orifice is at least one and a half centimeters. In this second case, we can see the membrane a lot more clearly in the peristernal long axis view. This one is, has the abnormality centered, and so it's not quite a classic view of the peristernal long axis because it's focusing on the membrane itself. And when we look at the color flow, we can see flow coming up from this inferior element here actually coming up. And again, it's quite low velocity there and doesn't look overly restrictive. When we look in short axis, we can see this membrane moving up and down very well there. And zooming on that. And just coming down towards the mitral valve. And again, we can see flow coming clearly up here along the atrial septum there. And now when we go to the full chamber view, we can see it is below the level of the left atrial appendage in this and the two chamber view. We can see relatively dilated coronary, um, coronary veins in flow there, and the coronary veins are up in size, which is quite typical with this. And similarly as well, when we come to the two chamber, as we can see this below the level of left atrial appendage, and we can see that flow coming up through there. And there's just zooming on that septum there. And in the two chamber view, and again, we've got a relative absence of the membrane over in this view. Thank you for watching my latest in this echo education series. I'm Marcus, senior sonographer from the Melbourne branch of Cardiovascular Services. Thank you again.